It began at the carnival in the St. Greg's Parish. I was playing around with Ryan near the rides. We were around nine years old. Ryan's uncle Mickey and my big brother Lil Pat were drinking in the beer garden. They were members of the Thorndale Avenue Jagoffs, the most ruthless gang on the far north side. The gunshot was abrupt. It sent a torrent of reactions through the mass of people. No one seemed to know which direction it had come from. I saw it though, the fire through the barrel. I watched little Pat run and jump the beer garden fence in the direction of the tall, skinny Syrian kid who held the pistol to his leg. A line of thin gray smoke leaked from the barrel and slithered up his wrist. The confusion continued as the Assyrian sprinted down the alley with little Pat and Mickey giving chase close behind. Ryan and I darted after them. A wild, menacing laughter erupted from little Pat and Mickey. We ran as fast as we could, but they pulled away from us as they sprinted across Ashland Ave and through the jewel parking lot. My heart banged in my ears. Across the half-empty parking lot, the Assyrian disappeared through the front door of the pharmacy with little Pat and Mickey close behind. The laughter rose to high hilarity. As we approached the pharmacy, I heard the screams from inside, but no gunshot. We stood there at the open door and peered in. There wasn't a soul in sight, just the screams and the deep leaden crunching. And then the sound dampened. The laughter plummeted to a bubbling demonic gurgle. There was a blur of motion. Ryan grabbed my arm and pulled me toward another doorway. We crammed in and pressed our backs to the glass door. Little Pat emerged from the drugstore with Mickey right behind him. The laughter fizzled to a popping giggle. Their hands were red as butchers to the forearms, and there was a bulge in Lil' Pat's blood-speckled waistband. As they jogged out, Lil' Pat's shirt rose above his belt, and I saw the wet wooden pistol grip. They glanced up and down Clark Street, wild-eyed, and then hung a left and disappeared into the darkness of the side street. The screaming continued inside. It was a woman's voice, and it was the only voice that could be heard. It was a quick panting between each scream. I listened as I hid there with Ryan beside me. Our chests heaved. The patter of little Pat and Mickey's steps dissipated. We entered the drugstore wordless. The woman screamed like she was falling into an endless black abyss. It rang in my ears. Trembling, we walked towards it. I saw the dark red puddle on the floor slowly expanding like a shadow across the green-gray tiles. I walked closer to the puddle's edge where I saw the young man, motionless, eyes still open. A deep crack above his eye ran up his forehead into his hairline. Thick blood oozed slow from the wound, wetting his frizzy black hair. His bottom jaw hung open and was cocked to the side of his narrow dark face like it had been dislodged from his hinge. The woman screamed deeper into the abyss, crumpled on the ground with the phone trembling in her hand. The puddle enveloped her legs and soaked the underside of her brown nylons. I looked at them in silent mourning for the young man and for something I hadn't words for. We slipped out of the store as others poured in through the doorway. We walked towards home in the quiet, our heads hung, the weight of it all around us. The air was thick and the carnival roared on in the distance. The sound of the children's joyous screams rose and fell but I had no urge to return. We walked down Clark to Hollywood Ave where the yellow sign of the corner store glowed stale and flickering. We stood there under it a while. You think they're gonna get caught up? I asked. Nah, there ain't nobody gonna rat them out. Shit, he was dead, wasn't he? Ryan didn't answer. We walked down and crossed Ashton with the sirens floating in the air. Ryan went his way to the north and I went home. I went up to my room and sat on the bed a while in the dark as the orange-yellow of the street light seeped in through the window. I thought about God. I thought about heaven and if a little pack could go there now. I wondered if I could go there now that I knew what I knew and was never going to tell. I held my crucifix and prayed to Jesus that he wasn't dead. After the others had gone to sleep, I went downstairs to the TV room and watched the reports of the murder. And that was the birth of Pistol Pat.